Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go over the statistical technique called the Box-Muller Transform. And this is a transformation that's used to sample from the normal distribution. In order to generate random numbers from a distribution, it's common to use another type of transformation called the inverse transform sampling method. But to use that method, you have to know the CDF and then the inverse CDF of the distribution you want to sample from. So for the normal distribution, there's no well-defined CDF. So there's no closed form expression for the normal distribution, the CDF of the normal distribution. So in that case, you can't use the inverse sampling method to sample from the normal distribution. So the box molar transform is one way of sampling from the normal distribution. And I'm going to go over the algorithm in this video. And then at the end, I'll go over some R code as well. So the box molar transform uses polar coordinates and also uniform random variables in order to transform into samples from the normal distribution. So it uses polar coordinates and uniformly distributed variables as part of the transform to get to samples from the normal distribution. So let's go ahead and get started with the video on how the transform works. The end result is going to be two independent random variables that are distributed normally. And so for the sake of this video, let's say we want to sample from the standard normal distribution that has mean zero and variance one. So we have two normally distributed random variables that are independent that I'm labeling X and Y. To sample from X and Y, we're going to use polar coordinates. So let's say every random sample from X is labeled lowercase x. And let's say every random sample we generate from the random variable capital Y, we're going to label as lowercase y. So x and y are two independent normal samples from the normal distribution. We can consider these random samples as a coordinate are in the Cartesian plane. So these samples can be considered x comma y, and we can plot that on a Cartesian plane as shown here. Then from this consideration of the samples as points, we can then consider convert the points or the samples into polar coordinates. So to do that, we need to know r, which is the distance from the origin to the point x, y. So that's r labeled here. And we need to know theta, which is the angle from the x-axis to the point or to the line from the point. The formula for r is calculated just from a simple distance from the point to the origin. So r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And then we can square both sides to get that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Now, if we go back to thinking of x and y as random variables that are normally distributed, then r squared, which is x squared plus y squared, you can think of this as being the square of a normal distribution for x squared. So that's going to be chi squared with degrees of freedom one, and y squared is also chi squared with degrees of freedom one. And then the entire expression is the sum of two chi squared distributions. So that would be distributed chi squared with degrees of freedom two. So basically you square a normal distribution, so that gives you a chi-squared, and then you take the sum of two chi-squared distributed distributions with degrees of freedom one, and that would give you a chi-squared with degrees of freedom two. So written out another way, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, and that is chi-squared distributed with degrees of freedom two. Now this chi-squared distribution with degrees of freedom two can also be transformed equivalently to other distributions. So this has been proven in the research literature and I will put a link in the description box below with an article that has all the proofs for this part. But basically a chi-squared degrees of freedom two distribution is equal to the exponential distribution with lambda equal to one half. So again, I'm not proving this part, but this has been shown to be true in the literature and you can rewrite or express an exponential distribution in terms of the negative log of a uniform distribution. So for exponential one half, that is equivalent to negative two natural log of a uniformly distributed random variable u. So I'm going to label that as u1, where u1 is uniformly distributed from zero one. And so r squared is distributed negative two log u. And so this, again, this transformation from chi squared 
squared to uniform has been proven to be true in the literature. I'll put a link in the description box below. But basically, we have our first uniform random variable that we can sample from, and then we can transform the uniform into a normal variable. So basically, we're working backwards. We want to be able to get samples from these two normal random variables, and the box Mueller does that by transforming them into uniform random variables, which we can sample from directly. So we did that for R, and we have to do the same thing for theta. So for theta, that's going to be able to be distributed anywhere in the unit circle. So that's just going to be 2 pi u2, where u2 is uniformly distributed 0, 1 as well. So now we know r2 and theta, and we're able to transform back to the Cartesian coordinates. So we know what the final polar coordinates are. For r, that's going to be equal to the square root a negative 2 natural log u1. And for theta, that's going to be equal to 2 pi u2. And then we can convert to the Cartesian coordinates to get the final equations that we're actually going to use to sample from the normal distribution. So for x, which is the first random variable, that's going to be equal to r cosine theta. And again, that just comes from the definitions from polar coordinates. And so that's going to be equal to the square root of negative 2 log u1 times cosine 2 pi u2. And y is going to be equal to r sine theta, which is equal to the square root of negative 2 log u1 times the cosine of 2 pi u2. And so these equations can be used to sample from the normal distribution, and you will get two independently normally distributed normal 0, 1 samples by using and plugging in two uniformly distributed random variables. So basically we have random samples that we can collect from u1 and u2, and we can use the Box-Muller transformation to get x, y, which are normally distributed 0, 1. And so that is the basic idea with the algorithm. And then in the next part of the video, I will go over an R demo. All right, so in this part of the video, I just have a short snippet of code to show visually that the samples that we are generating from the box Miller transform are normally distributed. So in this case, I'm going to get two variables, which I'm labeling samples one and samples two, which are each going to be independent and normally distributed zero one. And they're going to have a thousand samples each. So for n, that's going to be my sample size. So for each variable, I want a thousand samples samples from the normal distribution. And then the next lines of code, I'm just going to fill the two vectors or two variables with NAs. And then this is the line of code that runs the box Muller transform. So for the first two lines of code in the for loop, I'm just sampling from the uniform distribution for my random variable u1 and u2. Then in this line of code, I'm transforming it for the r distance equation. So I'm taking the square root of negative 2 log u1. And then for theta, I'm doing 2 pi u2. And then I'm plugging in r times cosine theta for x or samples 1. And then for samples 2 or y, I'm plugging in r r sine theta. I'm going to run that for loop and then my samples 1 and samples 2 variables should be normally distributed. So I'm going to compare that to the normally distributed random samples that are generated in R from the code R norm. So to do that, I'm just running these next couple lines of code. And basically what I want to do is just create a histogram that I want to show. So this final line of code will run a histogram in ggplot2. And when that finishes running, we see the visualization here. And also, by the way, I will put the link to this code in the description box below. But you can see that the blue values is the histogram for the samples that were, this is like the x random variable. And so those were the samples that were generated from the box Muller transform. And then the red samples were a thousand samples generated from R norm, which is the way you generate random samples from the normal distribution in R. So you can see that I have both those histograms overlapping and they roughly both look to be normally distributed. So you can see that there's some random variation between the two histograms, but they both look roughly normally distributed. And if you plotted samples two, you would get the same sort of result. And that's it for this video, and thank you guys for watching.